Good morning. Good morning to everyone here in this room. Good morning to everyone joining us online to Medford United Methodist Church. My name is Rachel Callender. I am the associate pastor here. And on behalf of myself, our senior pastor, Reverend Joe Monahan, the staff, the congregation, I am so excited to be worshiping with you all this morning. If you're joining us online, uh, you can let people know where you worship by sharing the stream. And I invite you to mark your attendance at medfordumc.org slash online dash attendance. Uh, you can also do so through our app, which is available, avail available for Apple or Android. And if you haven't ar already downloaded it, you can text Medford app, all one word, to 833-700-2226. You can use the same number to give a gift by texting Medford Give, and you can do so on our website. Today, we are continuing our series on Take Care. And it's all about self-care, and I'm hoping that you all have been taking some time here at the end of the summer to listen to your body and your soul and are, are taking steps to take care of yourself. Last week, Pastor Joe talked about taking care of our mind and spirit, and this week we're going to be moving outward to talking about taking care of our relationships. But before we begin this time of worship, I'd like to invite Barb Carlson and friends to start coming on up here. Um, Barb is going to talk to us a bit more about uh, the UMW's Push Your Tush event. You can come on up, uh, which actually starts this Wednesday. Go Team Rachel. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, Rachel. We are here today to talk to you about Medford United Methodist Church's latest event called Push Your Tush, sponsored by the UMW. It's an annual move-a-thon that we started last year. It's for everyone's benefit during September. All ages and stages are welcome. Our purpose is to raise some funds for the pastor's discretionary fund, okay? But our goal is just to raise a little money and have some fun doing it. Um, we, we, so we also want to have a little fun and encourage some wellness and team building, community building for this Medford UMC community. So I brought some friends with me today and uh, they'd like to share with you. We're not, they're just going to, you know, kind of, we're just going to mention some things that uh, are happening. You can join us for your, our Push Your Tush campaign, the PYT, by joining a team or just join as an individual. In fact, here are some of my friends. We have Steve and Jack who want to encourage you to join up for Pickleball. Sign up for Pickleball. Pickleball happens on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. And in particular, PYT is specifically sponsoring an event for those that are interested in learning about and playing Pickleball on September the 18th. Also, Heidi would tell you to Join Urban Promise, our uh, Medford UMC Urban Promise team. We try, we try to sponsor uh, their Urban Promise cycling event, which this year happens to be October the 2nd. Am I right? Yep. Yes. Okay. And we often have a team, so if you want to be involved with cycling and preparing for that, then uh, please see Heidi Pohemus. I am holding a volleyball here. That's to remind you, to tell you about the the church volleyball all-church event that we have scheduled for Sunday, September 26th in Freedom Park at 12.30. Bethany Carl is leading that charge, uh, so see her or look on our website to sign up for that. And then lastly, there's Claire walking away. She's doing the number one activity that is in the United States to stay fit, which is walking. 70% of the people say that they primarily do walking to stay fit. And so walk on away there, Claire. All these, all these activities for Push Your Tush events, they're also standalone activities. You can sign up separately, but we are using this as a community building activity because as Romans 8, 28 says, we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. So please join us for PYT Push Your Tush for this September. Sign up uh, through the Medford uh, website, or you can also go to pushyourtush at medfordumc.org, where these activities will be listed. Thank you, and get out there and push your tush. Get active for <laughs> September. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fantastic. Well, with all this in mind, let us center our hearts for worship. Let us come to God in a prayer that will come up on the screen. God of creation, you, our holy Lord, are our ultimate guide, an example of the beauty that can come from relationship. We give you thanks for the many kinds of relationships we have with one another in this room and online as a church family and community. And we give you thanks for our many loved ones who show us your love each and every day. Amen. Able and join us in our opening hymn, which is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, and the words will be behind us on the screen. You. you may be seated. Good morning. I am really happy to be with everybody today, and I'd like to invite, if we have any kids that are willing to come up, oh, we've got one right up in the front here, um, and if there's anybody else that wants to come up and join us, come on up. We have a story we're going to read, and I want to welcome any of our friends that are at home that want to come close to the screen now and hear a story that I'm going to share with you. Great. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. You can sit wherever you want. If you want to sit on the chairs, you can, or sit there. So this morning, we're going to hear a Bible lesson where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he tells them, he reminds them that they should love each other just as much as he's loved them, right? And he says, it's important to, be, to love our friends and have good friendships because there's no greater love than anyone can have than to be a good friend. And Jesus says to them also that he calls everybody, all his disciples and, and all those that follow him, his friends, because he's shared everything he knows about God with them. So those sound like some really good ideas about being good friends, would you say? The important, that friendships are important, right? And I bet you guys have good friends too, right? Do you like spending time with your friends? Yeah. 
So I have a book that I'm going to share with you. Elephant and Piggy are two of our favorite characters. Do you guys know anything about Elephant and Piggy? Do you know that story? Yeah? OK. So they have all kinds of adventures together. So we have the story up here on the screen that you can watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of your way so you can see. And our friends at home can see the book, too. And the story starts out where Gerald, the elephant, is feeling a little sad. He says, oh. And you can see Piggy sneaking up on the side there. So let's see what happens. Piggy realizes, my friend is sad. I will make him happy. Hmm. Let's see what ideas Piggy has. <gasps> Here he comes. Yeehaw! He says he's riding in. And Gerald's looking. A cowboy! He looks really happy, right? Oh, says Gerald. Piggy says, Gerald loves cowboys, but he's still sad. Hmm. There's, Ella. There's Gerald. Looking, and here comes Piggy. <gasps> What's Piggy doing? He's a clown. Oh, says Gerald. Clowns are funny, but he is still sad. Hmm. Now what's happening? What's Piggy doing? A robot. Yeah, so Gerald's really excited. A robot. Maybe this will make him happy. Oh, Piggy says, how can anyone be sad around a robot? Hmm, Gerald, Piggy. Piggy says, I am sorry. I wanted to make you happy, but you're still sad. Gerald says, I'm not sad now. I am happy. You are happy? Gerald says, I'm happy because you are here. But I was so sad, Piggy, so very sad. I saw a cowboy. Piggy's a little confused. But you love cowboys. <laughs> I do. I do love cowboys. But you were not here to see him. Well, in fact, I, there was more. Then I saw a clown, a funny, funny clown. Oh, but you were not there to see him. But hmm, there was more. <laughs> I saw a robot, a cool, cool robot. And my best friend was not there to see it with me. <laughs> I think Gerald was a little confused. But um, you see, Piggy says, I am here now. You are. You are here now. My friend is here now. Do you think Gerald's happy? Yeah, and do you think Piggy's happy? Gerald says, I need my friends. Piggy says, I think you need new glasses. <laughs> so Gerald didn't realize that that was Piggy, but he was sad because he wanted to share that experience with Piggy, right? And Piggy just wanted to make Gerald happy. Do you think that Gerald and Piggy are good friends? I think they're really good friends because Gerald wanted Piggy to be there to be happy with him, and Piggy really wanted to make him happy. Is that what friends do? They want to make each other happy? I think that's being a good friend, right? And I think that's kind of like what Jesus taught us, right? That being a good friend was to love each other just as much as he loved us. So. Let's try to remember that it's important to have friends, but it's just as important to be a good friend, too. You want to pray with me? Okay. Loving God, thank you for all the friends in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for also being all of our friends. Help me to be a good friend 
and to love others as you have loved us. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. And thank you for joining me at home. I hope you enjoyed the story. You can go back to your seats. Is your burden heavy as you bear it all alone? Does the road you travel harbor dangers yet unknown? Are you growing weary in the struggle of it all? Jesus will help you when on his name you call. He's always there, hearing every prayer, faithful and true. Walking by our side, in his love we hide all the day through. When you get discouraged, just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. Is the life you're living filled with sorrow and despair? Does the future press you with its worry and its care? Are you tired and friendless? Have you almost lost your way? Jesus will help you. Just call on him today. He is always there, hearing every prayer, faithful and true. Walking by our side in his love we hide all the day through. When you get discouraged, just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus. Come on and reach out to Jesus. I said reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to Good morning. The scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends 
because everything I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask in my Father's name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we give thanks for your holy word and ask that you be present with us as we continually navigate your calling and action in each of our lives. Amen. 15th century iconographer Andre Rublev is the, sa- is the writer of a famous piece of devotional art. Some call it the hospitality of Abraham, but others have simply referred to it as the Trinity. It is perhaps my personal favorite. The three figures you see represent the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the colors gold, blue, and green each hold their own special meaning of wholeness, creation, and growth. God is seen here embodying eternal relationship, community, and finding enjoyment in company and in being hospitable. Creation itself is represented by the blue you see on all three forms of the Holy One. And because of this, Franciscan friar Father Richard Rohr wrote that to truly see this is to say, in the beginning was the relationship but not just a relationship of God. If you see the rectangle in the front of the table, historians believe that the original contained a mirror, as if to say that the observer, us, is invited to the table in relationship with God, that we and all of creation can be a reflection of God's being relational. Today's scripture starts in the middle of a metaphor of Jesus. The beginning of the metaphor is a comparison of Jesus being the true vine and how community relationships can flourish. Basically, what he's saying is that Jesus is the vine, God is the vine grower, and that we are the branches. The branches can't produce fruit if they aren't connected to the vine and if the vine grower doesn't tend to it. The branches also can't produce fruit if bad vines aren't weeded out. Put a pin in that, we'll circle back to that. This vine metaphor leads into today's text where Jesus connects this idea of of the community of God growing and tending to one another to bear fruit with a call, really a commandment, to love each other just as God has loved us. We talked about this a little bit last week with the Gospel of Matthew's writing on the greatest commandment, being to love God and then to love our neighbors. We've talked about giving ourselves permission to take time for self-care, body, mind, and spirit, but today we're going to externalize that self-care into God's call to take care of our relationships, really for our own sake. Three thoughts. First, in relationships, we are to offer love, not to get the love back, but to spread love. Relationships of all types, through spouses or partners, through family members, through friends, at their core are an expression of God's love for us shared to and through others. I personally find that those truly loving relationships are what help me deeply understand God's gift of grace. For example, you're at the store picking up some milk or eggs or something. You walk by one of your family member's favorite snacks and instantly want to buy and surprise them with it not because you want them to give you your favorite snack back, but simply because you love them, you know that they'd love it, and it would make you happy to give them the snack. That's a lot like God's love. It's given to us without a prerequisite of loving God first. That love, though, once we recognize it, is so wonderful that we can't help but share it with others. And once again, that's without strings attached, freely given. But today's reading began with, As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. This is often seen as a triad of love. Like the icon seen at the beginning, God loves Jesus, Jesus loves the disciples, the disciples love God. God's initiation of love makes love possible to spread. 
Have you ever heard of the five love languages? It's a pretty popular concept. There are a lot of books on it. Couples tend to read them together. Uh, the five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. I personally love to receive words of affirmation. I can be pretty tough on myself. So a loved one uh, giving me a, a little word of affirmation can really help build me up. But I tend to express my love for those close to me through gift giving, actually. I love finding the perfect gift and wrapping it all beautiful and giving it to them. Love that. Understanding how you best feel loved and being able to articulate that to those close to you is really important. Maybe you're not a hugger. Maybe for it to be quality of time, phones need to be put away. Maybe just the thoughtfulness of a partner doing dishes without having to be asked is all you really want. Jesus continues, though, by saying, I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. God's love creates and spreads joy, and the best and most loving way for us to take care of our relationships is to offer into them the love that we have received from God, offer into them a desire not to receive love, we already have that from God, but to spread love. Which brings me to point number two, friendship is collaborative, a lot like what we saw in this morning's children's time. Aristotle once wrote, what is a friend? A single soul dwelling in two bodies. It's a beautiful image of the connection that the love of friendship, or as the Greeks would use philia, can create in two people. The Greeks have many words to describe the different types of love, and in today's text, we not only see a derivative of philia, but also agape, or an empathetic love for everyone. Jesus continues by saying, no one has a greater love, agape, than to give up one's life for one's friends, philos. You are my friends if you do as I command you. Once again, Jesus first exemplifies giving up one's life for those, who love, uh, for those God loves and then calls us to do the same. But that doesn't mean that a physical giving up always, uh, but really viewing it as putting one's own interests aside for others, thinking beyond individualism or self-preservation and really considering how we can give up ourselves for others. Sometimes that's our time, or maybe some of our resources or belongings. Sometimes it's being willing to be vulnerable or just say sorry first, maybe giving up some of our pride or entitlement, giving up some of that I deserve an apology first mentality. To take care of our friendships, we have to be a collaborative part of that friendship. Through Jesus, God has called us into an intimate relationship with the divine. God's participating only works if we participate also. And notice Jesus mentions doing as God commands. God is trying desperately to teach us how to be good friends. This so-called commandment, these aren't rules to make life rigid, but tools to teach us how to actually be loving participants in our relationships. Jesus continues, I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I've made known to you. The term servant used here wasn't thought of as a, the less than that we may think of it right now. It was often used as a high honor at, that many of our biblical leads were proud to take on. And in essence then, Jesus is ultimate, ultimately saying, you think that's a high honor? Believe it or not, I can offer you something even better than being God's servant. servant. I, you can be God's friend just by my sharing all that I am and you being a partner in that knowledge. It's a kind of intimacy of relationship with God that no one ever dared to guess was possible until Christ. At the time, there was a term, friends of the king or friends of the emperor. And this inner group was often close to their leader and someone that the leader themselves would consult with on big decisions before all others. And Jesus is exemplifying that here, that God is no longer this distant, mysterious figure, but our legitimate, collaborative friend and partner. And is, it is those qualities that, that we then build strong relationships with. We take care of our relationships by participating in them. Jesus is constantly breaking down walls between servant and friend, chair, first chair and last chair, wealthy and poor, educated and uneducated. 
Jesus is inviting us into a collaborative kind of relationship of being love and joy in the world. To take care of our friendships, we need to participate in that same way. Be collaborative partners in the relationship and invite all others to be so also. Which brings me to my third and final point. Choose wisely. Jesus says, You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. We are so prone to put one another down, to judge one another, to not actually put in the time and care needed to be a nurturing friend in a relationship that we actually have to be commanded to love each other. It's kind of sad. Notice here in this final section of today's text, Christ's focus on choice. Often when talking about marriages or partnerships, language like every day choosing that person is used, and this is wonderfully true. Our relationships are an active choice that God gives us the capacity and free will to choose. Jesus pulls us back to that tricky vine metaphor, though, stating that God has called us to flourish, and so our choices should reflect that. As much as we want to say, love everybody, <laughs> that, let's be honest, that's really tough to do, and just isn't going to look the same across the board. The love that I have for my sister is going to be different than the love that I have for the people I share a small group with, right? It's why the Greeks have so many words for, for love. As much as we say love everybody, sometimes for some relationships, the best choice for that relationship and for ourselves is to choose to distance ourselves from it. Sometimes branches have to be cut for us to bear fruit. That doesn't mean be rude. That doesn't mean to hate. It does mean that not all relationships help us flourish if they are close ones. The line that always weighs heavy on me in, is from Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, when Marley's ghost reveals, I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it on my own free will, and of my own free will, I wore it. It could be a heavy responsibility to realize that our choices have consequences. They have consequences in our lives, and our choices to maintain or disassociate certain relationships affect who we are, affect our health. There are points in Scripture, many points, where people are going after Jesus. They're, tr they're trying to trick him up. They're trying to make him look bad. Jesus doesn't stop loving them, but sometimes he does basically say, I don't have time for this. This isn't helping anyone, and I need to move on. For some of us, we may be choosing to grip tight to a relationship because we feel obligated to, even when it hurts us, even when it brings us pain or hurt. I get it, but sometimes, if that relationship doesn't help you be a branch that bears the fruit of God, we've got to cut it off. We've got to trim it back. Taking care of our relationships should be an act of taking care of ourselves. When we step up to that mirror, when our relationships are held up to that mirror, do they reflect God's loving, intimate, carefully chosen relationship with each one of us? In the beginning was the relationship. God has called us to reflect God's very own relational being in our very lives, to love others, to spread the amazing love that we undeservingly receive from the Lord and be a collaborative part in those relationships, but also to choose wisely in who we hold close, to choose to take care of ourselves and our relationships in a way that bears the fruit of the vine. Amen. I love being able to participate in the ministries here at Medford, whether by prayer or in person or through giving. And one of the ministries I participate in is the prayer shawl ministry that makes prayer shawls for people who are hurting or sad or in need, but also um, we make things for um, people who are baptized. We give out prayer shawls or small blankets to the children 
Here at Medford UMC, we're blessed to have so many ministries for you to be a part of and where you can make a real difference in the lives of others. We have the new food ministry, our partnership in Trenton at Maker's Place. We have the Push Your Tush fundraiser coming in September for the pastor's discretionary fund that helps local people in need. Our UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, is busy working globally in Haiti and Afghanistan with relief efforts. To support these ministries, you can use the app available for Apple or Android. You can text Medford Give, all one word, to 833-700-2226. You can visit us online at medfordumc.org or you can mail or drop off a check to 2 Harford Road, Medford, New Jersey, 08055. If you're here with us today, you can also drop your offering in one of the buckets uh, on your way in or out. And if you're giving to Haiti or Afghanistan relief, um, when you go into the app or online, there is a drop-down bar marked UMCOR, or you can write UMCOR on your check. And we are grateful for your continued support, both here and around the world. For those of you joining us online, I invite you now to share in the chat any prayers of joy or concern that you may have on your heart. Let us come to God in prayer. Holy Lord, we gather here this morning with souls tired from the world around us, tired of the constant disasters and destruction of the news, tired of the constant fear of the Delta variant, tired from constantly changing and overbooked schedules, tired of, of taking, putting off taking care of ourselves until another day. Be with us, God. Strengthen us to carve out time to heal and renew. With you, Lord, as our foundation, we can create a life that reflects the loving care you offer to each one of us. We pray for the tired souls the anxious souls, the fearful souls, the lost souls, the overworked souls, the grieving souls, 
the hungry souls, and the sad souls. Send down your Holy Spirit to wash over and through us. May your Spirit saturate our very cells, filling our veins with hope in you. We know you hear this prayer, the prayers on each of our hearts and minds, the prayers being shared in the online chat, and the prayers we cannot muster the courage to lift up to you. May we each find peace in the knowledge that you hear and see our hearts clearer than we can. We pray all this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We close our time together with the song Bind Us Together. So please stand as you're able and join us. From this space filled with thankfulness for the close relationship God wants to have with each one of us. May we take the time to nurture our beloved relationships as a reflection of this love from God. Go with God and go in peace. Amen. <laughs>